You know, I've been telling you guys forever that I saw Ozzy at a different theater here in town, but now I realize I saw Ozzy here. What were you doing here? I had a day off, I was out with Guar, and Ozzy, it was when Zach Wild had left the band, and they had this guy, Joe Holmes, that was in the band for like five minutes. Okay. And he played, right. and they played here, and it was Geezer was a bass player, and Mike Borden was the drummer. Oh, yeah. And I always thought it was at, what, what theater did I ask you guys about the last time? I was like, there's a theater, the Riv. The Riv. I thought yeah. it was the Riviera, but it was actually here, because I remember how beautiful yeah, all this is here. And it look, yeah, it looks like you're in, Morocco. How was it, Zach? It was amazing. I mean, it was Ozzy here. So yeah. I had to, you know, you realize those guys paint in broad strokes. You know, they don't know how to play, a, a, like, to, for him, a smaller place. For anybody else, this is a great That's what's great place. about this place. Let's walk. That's what's great about this place is that, like, it looks like no other place. Yeah. So if you have, like, a recollection of a show, right. even if it's fuzzy, you'll remember, like, the ceiling and light the stars that light up and the whole Arabian Nights thing going on. Like, it's nothing, there's nothing like this venue. When I was growing up, do you remember they used to call us the Aragon Brawl Room? Yeah, totally. So I was petrified to come here. And yeah. I remember like the Headbangers Ball Tour came here with Anthrax and Halloween, Exodus and who else well, was on that? Yeah. It was Anthrax, Exodus, Halloween and uh, God, it was just that, actually. Yeah. And so, that was, uh, Anthrax is persistent to time. I tried so hard to talk my mom into letting me come here, and she wouldn't let me because it was the ballroom. Yeah, it would have been intimidating. I saw, <laughs> I saw that show in Dallas, and I got thrown on stage because I was a little kid. I got thrown on stage during Halloween, and I flipped the singer off, and the bouncers kicked me out, and I missed the entire show. Because I, I flipped off the singer for Halloween. Wait, so the singer was like, that kid out? Yeah. Wow. He was like, you. <laughs> I feel like I've been flipped off so many times, but I've never. <laughs> I didn't like Halloween. So then. You didn't like the cut of your I know you didn't. I was 13, 14, and I'm in a parking lot by myself. My brother comes out of the show at the end of the gig, and he was like, couldn't contain his glee about how great the show was. And I was just like, fuck you, man. Yeah. So, he was that kid. I was that kid. It was like years, though, after that tour, because that tour was like 88, I think. Uh, uh, yeah. Headbangers yeah, yeah. Ball Tour. Yeah. Um, I finally made it here for Ramones and Social D played here in 1992 on Halloween. Mm -hmm. I remember making it up front with uh, me and a couple of my buddies. And Joey Ramone, he's like points down. And I, I spent the whole night bragging to my friends that he pointed at me. And right. you know how it is. He did. Yeah, yeah. He did. <laughs> I still You know what? I'm sure on his deathbed, he was like, I remember that kid. Chicago. That Italian 92. kid. That Italian kid in Chicago. He looked right at me. I felt compelled. Through. I felt compelled to point at him and let him know. I wrote our last four <laughs> records about that kid. Uh, I think the first show I came here was Nirvana and Jawbreaker oh, in 93. Oh, I yeah. want to say. They did two nights here, which is interesting because it was an incredible show, um, but also it was sort of memorialized in a Rolling Stone article, like a huge Rolling Stone article that uh, David Fricke did. And so like, if you read the article, he, like they take you through like Nirvana's day, like walking the hallways, being here like before the show on the floor. That's so you, you get a weird like insight to like what was happening before you actually walked out yeah. on the floor. Jawbreaker was like amazing, you know? I think Wait, Mudhoney played too. I was gonna ask you who was yeah. yeah. Mudhoney played too. And then I don't remember if I went to the first night or the second night, but I remember it was the In Utero tour and they did, uh, two nights and it was well it was then insane. full circle we all came and watched jawbreaker play here yeah. in yeah. 2019 yeah. like yep. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's right naked ray gun jawbreaker yeah mm -hmm. the smoking popes yeah, yeah. awesome right. show yeah that, God, was, that, was, awesome that was great show. i remember i came straight from a wedding so i had a suit on <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> i showed up to the jawbreaker show so with a suit crazy. on it was rose's wedding and i was like I, i'm like rose i love you but i gotta go to this i remember show. lee <laughs> lee was like look at fucking mackle rap <laughs> <laughs> just skanking in the <laughs> jawbreaker right they're ska right <laughs> but we've had great shows here i was trying to think about how many times we've played here oh, sure. it was a radio show. i think we opened for my chem okay. here which at oh, that point, yeah. we've been playing Chicago for years, yeah, right? Yeah. But we just never played yeah. here. Because we did a Q101 show here. Yeah. 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 Well, we've done a few. And then we, yeah, because we did another holiday show for um, Q101 a couple years ago. Cool. Yeah. I mean, the, and then we've headlined here. Uh, yeah, the right, most yeah. epic in my mind was when Bad Religion was opening. We did two nights here. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Out yeah. In advance. That's right. Yeah. I mean, the first time we played here, I was probably. Opening for my account at a Christmas show, I think. Is that right? 2008? Yeah, yeah. 2008? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Sounds about right. And I remember that. 
I think that was my first time maybe like really seeing like the dressing rooms and like backstage and thinking about all the shows that I'd seen here like Nirvana or Rage Against the Machine or Rollins Band or Helmet like and thinking oh, oh yeah they were back here in these hallways and I was yeah. the kid up front like in way in over my head you know trying to keep up with the brawl room. <laughs> yeah and the first time I came here I was telling these guys my grandparents were musicians in the 30s, 40s, 50s from Chicago and they played this place I don't know how many times and I heard stories growing up of Aragon Ballroom this big fancy place nicest you know venue in the country all this stuff so first time we played my grandparents were still alive at the time and I remember telling them I was playing here and just walking in and seeing this and kind of like retracing their steps. It's amazing. Pretty, pretty, pretty epic. It must yeah. be great to like all the stories they had told you. Oh, yeah. Do you have all that bouncing around your head and then you come and see it for yourself? Yeah, I mean, this place had air conditioning and, you know. Yeah, yeah, it was next level. yeah I mean, that was like that was yeah. like a big deal back yeah. then. And, you know, they they danced like 3 a.m. 3 this was sort of like a dance club, whatever type of dancing they were doing at the time. But, yeah, it's, it's uh, it was a pretty cool moment, full circle. And that it's still here. Like yeah. so many yeah. venues have been just raised Absolutely. or changed or just aren't there or, or modernized to be multi-use spaces and like this place hasn't changed yeah, I mean, you know yeah. so this was, i'm sure this was very similar to when it your grandparents played here yeah a little sweatier a little more beat up yeah, like yeah, rock yeah. club and i remember telling my grandmother at the time that i was playing here and she was like oh it's such a beautiful place and i was i remember telling her it's like a it's like a rock club now right yeah like a dirt not a dirty rock club but it's a dirty rock venue and uh she was so like Happy was still here, but right. blown away because it was like you go back to 1940. <laughs> this was like suit and tie, you know, yeah, fancy, yeah. fancy. She didn't imagine like shirtless dudes walking yeah. out to the rich guys. She was <laughs> playing here. Yeah. Well, yeah. the fact yeah. that it's still a club, a venue for musicians to play. Yeah. Think of how many condos could fit in here. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it hasn't been yeah. turned into something else that's more profitable for yeah. Yeah. you know yeah. venture Absolutely. capital. And I feel like anybody who knows about Aragon Ballroom won't talk about it without discussing the flawed acoustics of this place, especially for for loud rock music. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's one of those things where it's like, to fix it, you have to change it. Yeah. And what would you rather have? You know what I mean? Like, you'd have to make this all different. And like, this is, this should stay exactly like this, yeah. you know? Yeah. I always like looking at the ceiling too, because I wonder how often they've updated that. Like the it's not lit up right now, but I feel like, right, they normally, they can light up. Yeah. And on, our, on our off time, I actually, I oh, do you? A little bit. Oh, you touch do? It up. So That's you're amazing. the guy. <laughs> That's amazing. Up there in the ladder. <laughs> when we get back on tour, will you do this in my bunk? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, it's amazing to be in here today, especially after the year that we all had, to yeah. see these venues again. Because, like, for me and for you guys, like these venues are, they're kind of like our homes. You know, they, they, yeah, homes. they become our homes on the road, and especially when they are a place that we grew up going to see shows, even more special. So, to be playing here today. It's pretty awesome because, you know, we haven't played much in the last year and a half. No. Yeah. <laughs> and so to be able to play our songs in this room, like in Chicago, uh, I don't know, it's going to be pretty, pretty cool, almost like emotional, you know, yeah, to like be here, like you said, hollowed ground, you yeah. know, it's like it's hollowed ground. Because let's face it, I mean, these as as hackneyed as it might sound, these places are kind of like our religious temples. You know, these are our churches. Yeah. These are the places that we've kind of made a living playing and seeing shows and doing them ourselves and there's tons there's tons here in chicago you know there's there's the metro and there's this place and for us to get to come back to these places is always a it's a comfort and then it's a oh yeah this is what we get to do with our lives you know and i think it's these places that remind us that of that the most you know